In this video I'm going to outline a way I thought of for searching for extremely ancient cities and towns that would have been located near coastlines, which I feel seems reasonably obvious for someone to consider if they're an expert in the field at least, and can probably refine and do better than what I propose, and may have even tried this, but after some searching I couldn't find anything. I'm just editing this little bit after I've already made the video, but I thought I'd check Graham Hancock's archives and it turns out he did actually do a little bit of scuba diving and searching, but again didn't find anything much more than 3,000 years old, and I don't even know why this didn't come up in any of the search results. So let's start by taking a look at some of the details around the underwater ancient cities we've found, and why we probably haven't even dipped our toe in the water of this field yet. There is a serious lack of underwater expeditions in the search for extremely ancient civilizations, what I'll call pre-Younger Dryas civilizations. But it's probably due to a lack of funding and mainstream interest, which often goes hand in hand, so I can understand that. And with the amount of planning, equipment, and given weather conditions, etc., underwater expeditions can easily get extremely expensive so it's generally easier and cheaper, I guess, to practice archaeology on land. Unless something is spotted or suspected, which then forces a search in a specific location. There have been and continue to be the occasional searches that happen from time to time, but much of the time they seem to be in reasonably well-known areas, and usually within a couple of kilometres from land. Numerous findings have been made while searching for something completely different, and some found by accidentally being stumbled across by scuba divers, with very few sites found because of actually searching for sunken ruins. One of the most notable sunken cities is Heraklion, which was spoken about by many chroniclers in antiquity, including Herodotus. Situated near the mouth of the Nile, it was a trading and port city, and said to be the gateway to Egypt, eventually promoted to be the main port for Egypt. It unfortunately sunk around 1,500 years ago, but many statues and items are still pretty well preserved. This sunken city is around 6 kilometres from the land. There is also Ulus just off Crete, and Neapolis off Tunisia, which were both used from at least around late Egypt to early Roman times. I think the farthest out to sea discovered so far is around 20 kilometres from land, and that's the city in the Gulf of Kambat, but the dating of the site may not even be legitimate, as there doesn't seem to be any follow-up information on it, and there are controversies surrounding the team that reported the findings, especially that they excavated their findings by dredging, which is effectively just taking a huge scoop from the seabed. So yeah, that doesn't sound very scientifically reliable. <laughs> with them reporting a piece of wood from there being dated to around 10,000 years old also, which many people say could have easily just been part of an ancient tree or something environmental. So that place is still under much question. One site that has actually been dated to between 8,900 and 8,300 years ago is Atlit Yam, off the coast of Atlit in Israel, which is only around one kilometre from the land, it isn't a megalithic site, it's a more primitive Neolithic site, and there is still an erected stone circle standing after all these thousands of years. As it's dated to around 3,000 years after the Younger Dryas ended, then this doesn't really comment on our advancement in my opinion, as if we were struck by a catastrophe that caused widespread devastation, taking out the infrastructure and basically making the earth a fight for survival, then you would expect building skills and methods to revert to more simple, low-profile styles, at least until civilization found meaning, purpose, stability and growth again. Where we generally see the Sumerians as being the real start of our modern civilization advancing, who appeared around 3,000 years after this Neolithic site, and 6,000 years after the YD ended. The YD is what I'm going to call the Younger Dryas from now on in this video, by the way and so we'll use pre-YD to refer to civilizations from before the Younger Dryas. There is also the lost sunken city of Pavlopetri off Greece, which is thought to be around 5,000 years old, but most other submerged ancient cities to my knowledge so far that have been found usually are dated to within the last few thousand years at most. So as of now we haven't found any pre-YD submerged megalithic ruins, at least to our knowledge. 
If you look at where the human population resides today, you'll find around 40% of people living within 100 kilometers from coastlines. And most major large cities are near or on coastlines also. Which naturally makes sense, as the sea is an abundant source of resources, as well as providing the most efficient means of trading and travel. I know we have planes and cars and other transportation these days, but a large percentage of the population still choose to live near a coastline, which just shows how valuable it is still, even with our modern vehicles at our disposal. In our ancient past, the percentage living near coastlines may have been higher, as they obviously didn't have vehicles like we have, so living in an accessible region to trade and resources would have made a lot more sense and probably felt like a necessity, unlike these days where you can literally live miles from anywhere without worrying about food and resources due to our modern infrastructure. So taking into consideration these statistics I've outlined, and the fact that we have Gobekli Tepe, which is a confirmed megalithic site which dates to around 11,700 years ago, well, I think I may have come up with a method of finding and possibly roughly dating potential pre-YD ancient submerged cities. Now, to demonstrate my point in a minute with how populations naturally gravitate towards coastline areas, etc., I'll be using a fantastic interactive Google Earth animation created by Adrian Mayer and Carl Rege at the Zurich University of Applied Sciences, which I'll link in the description and I would highly encourage downloading and have a play around with the timeline while looking at different areas around the world. The land isn't high resolution unfortunately, but I guess this is the closest they could simulate it, so I'll take it. And there's still an abundance of information there. Right, so this method is only viable really if there were established civilizations before and around the time of the YD. Otherwise we may find nothing or just primitive ruins. So if you take into consideration what I laid out about the human population naturally preferring to live near coastlines for their numerous advantages, then if there were more ancient established civilizations prior to the YD, whether they were more advanced and had technology is a different matter for another video, but surely they would majoritarily also live or on coastlines like almost every culture we've ever recorded. So now we have reasonably accurate climate models dating back thousands of years as a result of different scientific data from numerous datasets, then if we are to take the search for evidence for pre-YD civilizations seriously, then doesn't it make sense to search and possibly even radar scan the floor under the sea following these ancient coastlines that are estimated in the historic climate models? So as you can see, this simulation runs from 21,000 years ago all the way up to the year 3000. I'll just quickly play through the simulation from this angle on Earth once. So let's have a little look around this map to see the different areas of land that could have possibly been occupied around 13,000 years ago, just before the time of the first spike of the YD period. And as you can see straight away there's land poking outside the border. This one's 120 kilometers. <laughs> 68 kilometers. 40 kilometers. See, there's a lot of land instantly that reaches quite far off the shore. 26 kilometers. Some of these are quite conservative as well. 48 kilometers. Obviously, when you look at Britain, we're quite aware of all this land that used to be there anyway. Whether the climate was too cold up here. But then we got all this around Italy as well. 180, 113 kilometers. So let's just see what the Mediterranean Sea looks like going back and forth through the timeline. Yep, as you can see, it's uh, lost quite a bit of land over the time. Let's put it back to 11,000 BC. And there's more land here. 110 kilometers worth. 
There's got to be stuff there. And obviously when you look at all this land as well. New Zealand's got a little bit more. And then provide a much more of a land bridge as well for people to actually be able to migrate over. And then look at all this land that used to be there. That is a huge chunk of land. You know, that's bigger than a lot of countries. <laughs> than most countries, by the seams of it, actually. If we head over to the South Americas. Oh, we got... 240, nearly... Yeah, 230-odd kilometre stretch of land out here. And then look at all this land. 300 kilometres. 153 kilometres. 130 kilometres. Nearly 200 kilometres. Two hundred and thirty kilometers. Then in the Gulf of Mexico, one hundred and forty kilometers out more, one hundred and sixty kilometers. So as I was outlining, because around forty percent of the population, even these days, live within a hundred kilometers of a coastline, then wouldn't it make sense that if we were to search for pre-YD civilization cities? then we should search maybe these regions under the ocean that used to be the ancient coastlines because clearly these would have possibly been where there would have been ports so like i said have a little play around with it yourself and see what other correlations you can possibly make as well because there's a lot of interest in places that you can find and you know run the clock back and forth as well because then you can see what happens like for example <laughs> this whole Persian Gulf is just not even there then. Wait there, let's have a look. Barely there. A little river coming in, that's about it. So there might be a heck of a lot even in the Persian Gulf. Also, if we pull back around to the north of Africa, then you can see how green it starts getting from around 11,000 years ago. And then it starts reverting back to desert, but parts of it were still lush, even in the early dynastic Egyptian period by the looks of it. So I think this method seems like it may actually be a viable option, especially if we were hit with major cataclysms all those thousands of years ago, as we know it's extremely hard to find ancient sites with any radiocarbon datable evidence still intact after 12,000 years plus anyway. And Gobekli Tepe was purposely buried, so we were lucky to find it, but with this ancient coastline method of searching, if an underwater city, town or village is found, then we can cross-reference the past climate models with the location of the sunken ancient site in question and see when that land was exposed, and especially if a potential port or something was identified, then that would make it easier to narrow down the time frame it occupied, as you could line it up where there would have been a coast at that area, and that might give you a rough time frame of when it was built and occupied. I'm sure you get the idea by now. So if you'd like to download this interactive animation, I'll post the link in the description like I said, so you can have a play around with the timeline, look at different regions of the world and see how the landmass has changed over the last 21,000 years. With that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video there. So what do you think? Does this sound like a reasonable method of searching for pre-Younger Dryas cities? Do you know of any potential candidates already? Well, please leave a comment with your thoughts, and I look forward to potentially finding some new ancient sunken long-lost cities. Thank you for watching. Please share this video as the more people we have using this method to search, the faster we may get results and confirmed locations. Also, if you like what I do, please consider supporting me on Patreon for as little as $2 a month. I don't have a team or anything, this is just all my own research, opinion, scripting, editing, etc. And I always want to strive to bring quality content and unique perspectives in our pursuit to finding the truth of our ancient past. Thanks again, and take care of yourselves out there.